Welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's discuss about glycolysis. It is also known as emden meyerhoff pardner's pathway. It is the principal route of carbohydrate metabolism. Glycolysis basically refers to a process where glucose is converted to pyruvate or lactate. It takes place in the cytoplasm of all cells. Overall reaction for glycolysis is the glucose with ADP and phosphate becomes lactate to ATP and to water molecules. Sounds fun, right? But many steps occur in between until the lactate is obtained. But before knowing them all, let's get familiar with some basic terminologies. The term phosphorylation refers to addition of phosphate group to an organic compound. Isomerization is a process by which a compound is transformed into isomeric form which has the same chemical composition but different physical and chemical properties. Dehydrogenation refers to removal of hydrogen from an organic molecule. Now let's decode the glycolytic pathway stepwise. In step 1, the glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate by an enzyme called hexokinase. This enzyme also splits ATP to ADP and the phosphate group is added to the glucose. The energy released by the hydrolysis of ATP is utilized for the forward reaction. Hexokinase is a key glycolytic enzyme here and the kinase reaction is irreversible. In step 2, the glucose 6-phosphate is isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate by an enzyme called phosphohexoisomerase which is a reversible reaction. In step 3, the fructose 6-phosphate is further phosphorylated to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by an enzyme called phosphofructokinase. This enzyme here is rate-limiting enzyme of glycolysis and this enzyme is responsible for catalyzing the second phosphorylation step of glycolysis. It also uses a molecule of ATP. The step 1, 2 and 3 are together called as the preparatory phase. In step 4, a reversible reaction occurs where the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which is a 6-carbon compound, gets cleaved into two 3-carbon units. Among them, one is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and the other is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This reaction is a backward reaction of aldol condensation and hence the enzyme is aldolase. Now here we can find a sub-step which is step 4a where the dihydroxyacetone phosphate is isomerized to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by an enzyme called phosphotriosomerase. Therefore, till here the glucose is split into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Hence the step 4 and 4a are together called as the splitting phase. In step 5, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is dehydrogenated and simultaneously phosphorylated to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate with the help of NAD+. The enzyme is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase and the product contains high energy bond. In step 6, a molecule of ATP is produced by the energy trapped in the 1,3-bisphosphate with the help of bisphosphoglycerate kinase. This is an example of substrate level phosphorylation reaction. In step 7, the 3 phosphoglycerate is isomerized to 2 phosphoglycerate by shifting the phosphate group from 3rd to 2nd carbon. This enzyme is phosphoglyceromutase, which makes it a reversible reaction. Once this 2 phosphoglycerate is formed, the enzyme enolase comes into picture to convert it into phosphoenol pyruvate where one water molecule is removed. A high energy phosphate bond is thus produced. Now remember, enolase requires magnesium ion to work. But if fluoride is present, it will remove the magnesium ions and will irreversibly inhibit this enzyme. In step 9, the phosphoenol pyruvate is dephosphorylated to pyruvate by an enzyme called pyruvate kinase, which is a key glycolytic enzyme. Here, one mole of ATP is generated. And this reaction is another example of substrate level phosphorylation. And in step 10, only under an anaerobic condition, the pyruvate is reduced to lactate by an enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase. Here is the summary of the steps of glycolytic pathway. I hope you guys found it helpful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinair. Thank you for watching.